welcome to Let's Talk with a Flip. How are you doing? Hi, not oh, bad. It's um, a rainy day out here. <laughs> that's that's wonderful. It's actually raining here as well. So yeah, um, yes. Um, I would like us to introduce ourselves. We're still waiting for one of our guests. He was in before, but we lost him. So um, he's going to join in along the way. So um, can you just introduce yourselves, please? Um, let's start with uh, let's start with Bami because we're going to be losing him soon. All right, Bami, can you give us a quick introduction? Uh -huh. Hi, I'm uh, Bami Debanjo uh, Bami Dele. I'm um, a mental health nurse aspirant, and um, at the moment I'm in work. Um, I've kind of come from a safe health and safety background, and I've done a bit of uh, business studies as well and business management. At the moment, I work with the health and social care, and um, obviously at the front line. So. It's been hectic at the moment, uh, trying to compact with the whole COVID thing. Yeah. And uh, God has been merciful to us Yeah, all. beautiful, beautiful. That, that's, that's it. Thank you so much, Bami, for that. Oh, yeah, Mike is back in now. And that's a perfect position. Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> um, we we're just introducing ourselves now. So, um, Gil, Bami has joined us as well. He's just introduced himself as well. Um, so we're going to listen to Gail now. Give us a brief introduction about yourself before we go further. Of course. So my name is Gail McCoy. Um, I am a marketing consultant for Nike Private who are looking to um, start a small business or a side hustle. And I also help entrepreneurs uh, create marketing plans and, you know, digital marketing plans and content creation in order to push their business further to gain more customers and have more revenue. Yes. Oh, beautiful. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks for joining us again. Um, can we now miss the African cinema? Can you please introduce <laughs> yourselves, please? <laughs> okay. My, my name is um, my, so my, my name is Michael Parish Ajiri. Um, first, I'm a, I'm a filmmaker. Um, I'm also president of the Pan-African Film Consortium, which is the largest community of African cinema stakeholders in the world. Uh, yeah. I am also an executive director at the Pan-African Arts, Culture and Trade Institute in Toronto. Um, yeah, everything I do, you know, circles around film, culture and arts. All right. Beautiful. Thank you so much. And you're all welcome. Um, well, we all know the topic for today, which is why a woman needs a career. Basically, why a woman needs education, then a career follows. That's what we are touching. Um, before we go further, I would like us to actually um, draw some light on the importance of career for a woman. Why exactly every woman should be educated and have a career to follow. Um, but I would like us to go first into the history, really, about how women started getting into this level of being um, a career person or wanting to pursue a career or wanting to study. Um, because Bami will be leaving us shortly, we're going to be giving him that um, priority to express himself before he leaves us. So Bami Dele, can you um, share a bit of light about um, a bit of the history of women coming into career or wanting to be in the limelight of education and all that and empowerment, really. Thank you. Can I, can I, can I just correct you quickly? I don't know the idea you're looking at the whole thing from. You don't actually need the education to build a career. I right. I, I can say that to anybody. You don't actually need education to build a career. The thing okay. is... Um, um, obviously, we live in a global world and things are changing rapidly and there's a vast knowledge um, out there for people to tap into and uh, that's the more reason there's a bit of diversification in the way we look at things presently. Um, obviously, you know the stories behind um, unequal pay rights in the 60s and in the 50s where we had our great-grandmothers and um, a lot of women who were working in the same um, farm, sugarcane plantation and um, the wool plantation where the men were paid more money and the women were paid, paid lesser pay. And uh, they were still doing the same jobs back in the days. And we had the days of um, Winston Churchill where they believed that a woman's place is 
basically in the kitchen and in the home to look after kids where the men go and work. And um, obviously, the, when human rights came into place in the 70s and early, in the early 70s, there was um, agitation for equality. There was agitation for freedom of speech. There was agitation to live, to own a property, to operate and different human rights that we have today. Um, I, I think this was the biggest move that made a lot of women want to develop on a career and actually you know have a focus on what they do in their day-to-day -day and use it as a source of livelihood yeah. obviously you know back in the days like i said um women were doing the same hours with men and they were paid like nearly three or four shillings less than what men get paid yeah. and um you know we had the, the, the we had this um we had the days of margaret thatcher where she was the first um, prime minister in the United Kingdom. And we had the days where women were not even allowed to vote in the 50s and in the 60s. So yeah, yeah. A, lot of things, a lot of things came up on board as a result of uh, human rights. And I'm pretty happy today that the ladies out there, some of them have um, actually developed themselves educationally. Some of them have actually acquired new skill. And these things are things they've actually turned into a livelihood. And, um, I see women doing a lot of things and even as we speak in the political field back in the days women never used to hold positions in power um as we speak there are some positions in venezuela that venezuela cabinet that belongs to women there are some positions in india as well that were occupied occupied in, by women even as we speak today in the assembly nigerian house of assembly we never used to have women in the cabinet but now there's um, a bit of chance for them. I understand that there's still the the, uh, the proportion is still low, but I know as time goes on, things will change. And um, I think this is actually what led to career development uh, for a lot of women. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank, thank, thank you so much for that. Um, yes, you rightly, like you rightly said about the difference in career and education. Yes. But in this case, the reason why I pointed that out is because they go hand in hand. Because in those days that we are talking about, they never even looked at being educated, let alone having a career. The career thing was basically women being farmers and all that. So if we look into just that, it's still going to bring down the value of saying a woman becoming a career person and getting education. So they all are, they are both actually interwoven to what the women of today are. Because women of today now, they grow with their career and still fall back on education because that takes them to a greater height. Because becoming whatever president being in that stage or going further in whatever business or career they have, they still need that grassroots of having a sound education. That is why these days we see women of 50 starting going back to study BSc. So they are actually interwoven but thank you so much for drawing those points out but that thing about education and career is a very massive topic <laughs> to actually discuss which is good so um yes thank you um so much for those points you pulled out um gail do you have anything else to chip into what he has just um touched about um the history of women um in career and all that of course, of course. I mean, he's made some fantastic points, and thank you, Pamela, for that. Those points are very true. Um, I think I'm sort of going to bring it to the, the cultural point of view, whereby in the Black community, I feel, some people still hold those people. A woman shouldn't be too educated. Yeah. You know, I've been in universities, I have a degree and I have a master's, and people have told me whilst I was doing my master's that I will be way too intimidating to a woman. A woman shouldn't be that educated. A, a woman yeah. shouldn't have the education because it is a, um, a man's place to have the education. It is a man's place to earn a lot of money and do all of those things, you know. Um, and I still see it. I mean, um, I can't speak for every African country, but I'm Congolese and especially for the poorer families they will always choose for the daughter to stay at home yeah. even though she's surviving you know even mm -hmm. if she, she, well they will always say well the daughter needs to stay at home my son needs to go to school because he will find a good yeah. job mm -hmm. totally totally diminishing the power of 
a woman can do and is diminishing what she can gain and what she can bring to the family. And very much so, Bami Dele is also right whereby you don't always need education. Some of the richest people in the world that you see, the Richard Branson, the um, Steve Jobs, God rest his soul, they all went through the educational path but then realized that it wasn't for them. Um, so Alan Sugar, you know, never got any GCSEs whatsoever. Yeah. But yeah, he's one of the richest person in, in the UK. So although the two go very much hand in hand, I believe that they do. But at times, if you have something uh, amazing to offer, then perhaps education could actually slow you down. But yes, that's my take on that. All right. Thank you so much, Gil. Um, let's go to Mike Parrish now. Um, what have you got to add to this discussion now? Oh, well, for me, I would, I would say that women have always wanted to address issues that have to do with social, political, and economic uh, grievances. It's, it thinks that now, um, if I take you back to 1999, uh, if you remember the Abba Women Riots, uh, yeah. I, I don't know if, if, if any of you conversed with the Abba Women's Riot. And it was a, a protest, you know, uh, against restricting women in governance. That was way back in, in the early 900s and, and all that. You know, and back to the present day, it's no longer the issue where the African culture states that the woman's place is in the kitchen. Um, although se several cultures still would want to subdue a woman's position and ensure that um, she's relegated to the kitchen. Uh, but then, you know, I, I appreciate the fact that a lot of governments, especially in Africa, are beginning to see beyond, um, um, beyond that perspective. Countries like Rwanda, for example, where you know you find out that the number one country uh where you find women in politics and then you you look at the nigerian uh statistics it's still very far for us in nigeria because the culture uh, is not paved the way for women to properly express themselves in society and just like bamadili had said there's still very few women in decision making position in Nigeria, which I believe should have changed. Um, I believe that by now we should have, you know, probably had one or two women as vice presidents to, you know, for status in, in Nigeria. There are very few women who are, you know, deputy governors in, in, uh, in Nigeria. And then, of course, they're not um, still believe that women are not to be educated. Majority of, you know, uh, people in northern Nigeria. So Ooh, next work. <laughs> overall, I think it's, it's it's changing. It's changing thanks to the likes of um, uh, Lynn Salif Johnson, a former president of Liberia, and Joyce Banda, who had broken the jinx to say that no women, you know, should should be in power. And of course, uh, Lamini Zuma, the former chairperson of the African Union, uh, who was also very influential. Um, um, women in in all uh, perspective, and then yeah. the likes of Amina Mohamed, the sec deputy secretary general uh, to the United Nations. These are the kind of women uh, that I believe should, you know, use their voices to power a new revolution where women would take the rightful places in society. Beautiful, beautiful. Those, those were actually very powerful points there, really, um, which is really awesome. Um, yeah, um, Bami, do we still have you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got two or three more minutes with you just to find out. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then. That, that's fine. We understand you're, you're at work at the minute. Yeah, that's fine. Um, yes. Can we now, based on what we have just said, um, if we can just shed more light and talk more about um, when exactly um, women started clamoring for these posts 
or focusing on their career now can anyone um go back into that and how it came came about you talked about the riots and how they were protesting and wanted to be in um Bami Dele, can you shed more light on that point and how this actually happened that that has now become something that every woman wants to get into you see like it's like i still said like, the, the biggest icebreaker for the women folks was when there was equality and human rights the human rights came and it got amended in 2008 and okay. they amended it based on the on the fact that there are some there are some things that was added that it wasn't there before right i remembered in the 30s and in the 40s women not, were not allowed to vote you were not even allowed to carry a voting card right you know when the station came that there was equality and there was equal pay in place of work it gave women the platform where their voices could be heard like let me give you an instance i could remember in nigeria fella agnikula kokuti's mother funlai oranson kuti was the first lady who ever drove a car this this same lady has done things that was never mentioned. She was one of the first ladies who took our military on a plane from Nigeria to London, right? But because of the fact that they've, they've, they've always marginalized women in little things, most yeah. of them has not been documented. But it's just that as things are growing, we realize that there's a lot of awareness. And yeah. it still goes back to what I said initially, mm -hmm. that you don't actually need and education to be a career person. Presently, the the, the, the the English female team, right? The lady who is their coach, the former lady who was their coach, she never went through any tertiary institution and she took them to different competitions and they won different trophies. Um, yeah. As we speak, right? Where we, where we, the, the, the orientation our parents have is you must go to school, you mm -hmm. must do this, you must do that. But then they've, they've forgotten the fact that sometimes a lot of the so-called elites in the society today does not even have any educational background because most of them actually saw a trade actually saw a, a trade and actually saw an opening somewhere and they marginalize on that opportunity so for me i think i'm pretty happy that there's a lot of things out there that women are doing like in saudi arabia do you know that saudi arabia women never used to drive car in saudi arabia Women were only given the opportunity to start driving car like four or five years ago in Saudi Arabia. Even as we speak, a woman cannot walk with her husband in Saudi Arabia at the same platform. She walks behind while the husband walks in front. That still tells no, you that we still have a lot of countries <laughs> where, yeah. where there's a lot of inequalities and disparity. And these things are, are so strong that it has to take a lot of time to get broken. And um, like I said, this is an opportunity for a lot of women out here listening to this um, uh, talk show to actually take up the mantle and, you know, if there's any position going out there, let them challenge themselves into positions. And um, like I said, it, we've got women in, in, in power and in positions that I know, that you know, that, that you yourself know, that have actually done well. We, yeah. We've got Dora Akunyele. Dora Akunyele was the lady who had that now that she did so much well, she did very well in NAVDAC. We had Okonji Onye um, Owela. She did so much mm -hmm. in IMF. She did so much with the financial market. And you know, we've got people that are women that have finally created a niche, you know, and um, mm -hmm. the trend will carry on as time goes on. But yeah. it's just a case of allowing that opportunity. And that I don't know, I don't, I don't actually know the percentage when we talk about how many percent would be allowed into most of these um, social opportunities and uh, you know and, and these positions out there in in every system of government so that that's just it but basically women saw that equality has come up and they had to use that opportunity, the opportunity. And i'm pretty happy that a lot of them are doing uh, are moving at, at this point i've got to you know step out yeah, at that think, point uh, okay thanks so much Bami. Um, take care. Enjoy the rest of your time at work, and thank you. Um, yes, that that's Bye. yeah, <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much, guys. Yes, he was he just wanted to come in for yes a few minutes to to just chip in what he feels should be shared, which is nice. Um, yeah. 
this brings us now to what we actually feel is right or what we feel women should keep doing do you think it's good for a woman to have a career now i'm not going to start with you gail i will start with the man in our midst this time yes um, because i believe both of us we, we share the same idea oh <laughs> uh, yes do you really think a woman really needs a career to become something to be heard in any way or form mr mike okay so for me i i've always respected a career woman um a woman who to some extent is independent and can make decisions on her own without fear or favor. And so in my industry, for example, you find a lot of, in the past, we didn't have, we didn't have women who, who made films, you know, we didn't have uh, female film directors. Um, so you probably had the women focused in one section, which is yeah. acting, you know, but over the past 10 years, there was, there's been this, you know, a sudden spring and arch from women to make films. And so we started having very influential women in the film industry. Mm -hmm. uh, female from South Africa, you had the likes of Sarah Bleacher. From Nigeria, you started having um, the likes of Mo Akudu. You had Tokwe Oshin. In Ghana, you had Lila Jensen. And then you had to go to Cameroon and all those places. And we, we realized that Women also pay more attention to details compared to men. Men are always in a hurry to, to make a point. Yeah, let's, let's make this happen. And because men are always of the impression that they know it better, they tend to make a lot of mistakes along the way, you know. But when you rate the African film industry currently, uh, some of the most influential people in the film industry are women. Yeah. Women, women actually play the major role from production to financing to distribution. You realize that women are the go-getters, the make, and then and then men become envious and say, "Oh, because she's a woman, she can actually get all these things easier." But then, from my own perspective, I think that you know, when women make up their mind to make things happen. To go the extra mile to ensure that it is done and properly done. So I, I respect women who have chosen a, a career to lead, and then religiously ensure that they succeed in that path they've taken. I'm not a respecter of housewives. You know, women will say, "Okay, let me sit in the house and allow my husband make all the decisions." That is old school. You know, yeah, it is yeah. of my grandparents, it's, mm. it should not be the culture now. Um, I, I I believe that the, the, the issue of gender equality is what we should um, practice and encourage, you know, so that um, everyone, be it a man or woman, can actually find themselves in whatever field they want without fear or favor. Yeah. Um, they, 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 they can all so they can also see the, your, you can succeed not because you or because you understand that uh, career path that you've chosen. Yeah. You know, so it's 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 for me. I think it's it's. I would I would encourage any woman who decides to choose a career. And and just like Bami Dili had said, you know, one thing I might disagree a bit with what uh, Bam Dele had said was about education. I think education is key. Education gives you some sort of orientation to thrive and understand, you know, gives you, you know, a, an opportunity for proper understanding who you've chosen. Now, yeah. um, there, there are several types of education. The one you, you know, you, the process you go through in school and then the social process yeah. whereby you know you, you learn from family friends peer group and maybe your environment you know yeah. but the ones in that circle do not give you the kind of orientation that a proper schooling a proper uh, learning process a proper process going through primary secondary and university level gives to you um it gives you also 
uh, uh, confidence to a certain extent beyond just the knowledge of I can make my I can make air beyond the knowledge of I can you know I, I can do this or I can do that. There's that yeah. confidence proper education gives to a woman yeah. that you really cannot take away from her. At all. Yeah, yeah, that, that's true. Thank you so much um, for those points. They're awesome. Gail, what do you have to add to this now about women actually having a career? Do you think this is good? Should it keep going on or, or not? I think, <laughs> I think it's a great deal. I mean, it's a great thing. I mean, one, one thing that I would disagree with you, Michael, is that being a housewife is also a career that's that's one thing i would say simply because simply because i am the eldest of four children okay my mom is an educated woman and that's a choice that she made okay she's yeah. been to, she's an educated woman every woman in my family have been strong women educated working etc etc and they chose to become you know housewives so i feel that again that, that's your own personal choice but i feel like being a housewife is also a career okay it yeah. is okay. it depends on it depends on the point of view. it depends on it depends on how you see it you know maybe your culture differs when it comes to the role of a housewife you know but in nigeria or in certain part of africa the housewife is believed to be the woman who sits in the house and everything is done on the behalf and all decisions are made by the man and all she needs to do is just listen to what the man has to say and manage the home that's not the household that i come from <laughs> just to make it <laughs> yes it actually shows now that it's from a different perspective but i really think what you said about the housewife your definition actually doesn't go with all women there are some women that are actually just comfortable with being lazy and not doing exactly. anything and hiding yeah. under the shadow of i'm raising the children i'm cooking and waiting for you that's i and i think i personally true. think that's that's laziness really yeah that's to me that's <laughs> not, like, no woman whether from my dad's side or my mom's side of the family no woman is like that they chose to stay at home to make sure that they are present for their children but you best believe that when it's time to work and make something happen for the family they are there they are important decision makers okay yeah. in yeah. terms of having a career now i believe in being a holistic person okay yeah. like you said perhaps in the past you know some women were nothing without their husband without their home they were the shadow yeah. of the home my husband is there and i am behind and that's all i am in this day and age in the world that we live in as a woman i believe that you need to have something that stimulates you outside of the home and that is your career and then you have of course your partner and you have your children if and when you have some i believe that having a career makes you not only an important part of the home but an important part of society as well uh, women have stories to tell you know women have experiences that are completely different so especially like being in the marketing industry how are you a man going to market to me when you do not know or no do you understand what i go through you know it and it's all with the whole black lives matter movement as well how is a person of another ethnicity going to, to market to me when they do not understand the culture oh, yeah, they do not understand. yeah talk to me like i said we're all africans in the room but i'm congolese there are certain things you know primarily to my culture that you may not understand and there's pr things primarily to the nigerian culture that i will not understand although i have a lot of nigerian friends but there's certain things that i do you know that do not appeal to me so it is very very important um for us to be in the room for us to talk and one thing that you might call about, you know women being important decision makers in the film industry first of all i did not even know you know the stuff that you mentioned how important that they are and yeah. it's also starting to show now you know in um in the united states whereby people say well you know you're writing these movies but where are the you know the female directors yeah. where are they yeah. so you're very much right like we need to be there we there's need to other, be there's other other dufani so yes. <laughs> yeah she does everything for us doesn't she so yes. yeah yes. <laughs> yeah that's true well so, so um yeah uh, gal am i uh, did i pronounce it well gal yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. okay so i appreciate your your points i know i've been to i've been to kinsasha i've, okay. I've been to 
about 45 countries in Africa. So I, I know a bit about most part of Africa. And, and I also know that um, a lot of women do not want to accept the fact that they are jobless. <laughs> so, and they don't have a career. Mm -hmm. 